uh, data with Dominic and specifically our Microsoft Fabric playlist. And in today's video, we're going to be um, starting with uh, real time analytics and specifically the Custo DB or how to create your first Custo DB um, in Fabric and load some data into it, right? So this comes under the RTA section or real time analytics section um, of. Uh, Microsoft Fabric. So Microsoft has some uh, great uh, documentation on the whole what what is RTA, when to use RTA. They've got some sample scenarios and how to use RTA within Fabric. But cutting in short, basically RTA is um, when you want to work with data that is streaming data or time series data, right? So and this data is constantly being uh, created or fed to your systems, and you want to as soon as it enters the system either store it into a table, like push it into a table after some transformation or make some modifications and push it to another DB. So, and this data is a continuous flow of data. So you want to basically analyze that and make, get insights as the data is coming, as soon as it's coming. So there's high freshness of data and things like that. So uh, this article really goes into great detail on all of this. So I'll link to this. Uh, it's what is real-time analytics in Fabric. And also what we're specifically going to be looking at uh, today is the KQL uh, database, right? So um, in real-time analytics, you interact with your data in the context of databases. A single workspace, that is a fabric workspace, can hold multiple databases, and each database can hold multiple tables. So this database that they refer to is uh, your KQL database, right? So you can store these tables, store your data, streaming data in these tables, which reside in a KQL database, right? and each uh, workspace that you work in can have multiple KQL databases. So let's jump into the demo section and see how exactly we can create a KQL database and load some data. All right, so as you can see here, we've come to our homepage. We, maybe we can go over to our workspace section and just hit a new, come right to the bottom and in the real-time analytics section, we've got this KQL database. So can give it a name. KQL DB1, hit create. Okay, so once we've created our uh, KQL DB, our Custo DB, uh, we, what we basically have is um, this landing page for our KQL DB, and uh, it gives us the database name and then some details about who created it, which region the computer stored in, uh, when it was created, and we've got a query URI, ingestion URIs, and a one leg folder path, and also it'll tell you what your or the size of the data which is being ingested into your Custo uh, or KQL DB. So right now there are no tables to be found in here, but for this very simple uh, demo, which is we're going to simply just load some data that we already have inside of uh, one lake. That is, we already have some files inside one of our lake houses, and we just want to make that data available to us as a table inside this uh, uh, KQL DB. We'll be going through. Um, in detail all the functionalities of KQLDB so subscribe and uh, turn on notifications to get updated when we do those videos but for right now what we're going to do is they've got a get data button up here and you can see all these sources so they take data sources uh, from a one-time load or a continuous load right so suppose you have historical data that you need backed up you can do a one-time load into a table and then you have continuous stuff that's going to start coming in you can uh, connect uh, that to uh, event hubs or a pipeline or a data flow uh, to continuously stream and refresh that kind of data. So for this example, like I said, it's simple. We're just going to take some one lake files that we have and give it a name. So I'm just going to call this table sample since it's just a sample file. And you can either append an existing table or create a new table. Since we don't have any tables, we can't append. And then the source tab, we've set it as one lake and we need to give it a path all right so this thing really annoys me i hope the microsoft team fixes this soon but basically you need to remember to come into your lake house and get the files path 
before you start that uh, process of importing a uh, file as a table. So what we need to do is come over to our lake house and we see a file that we want to import. We can just hit properties and we copy the AVFS path. All right, that's copied. Now we come over to the KQLD again. Same process, get data one lake. Sample is the table's name we have set. Next source one lake. Paste this. Next schema, so it goes in. It checks the schema, and you can make all the changes that you want. Suppose it's read something wrong. So I've noticed this um, with some of the other things in um, Fabric. Whereas if you've got a lot of data, and the first set of data always looks like an integer or something like that, it doesn't go very far into your data to make a prediction of what the data type is. So just make sure everything's correct. So this looks good. Everything is good. You can rename you can sort you can change data type all that kind of stuff yeah everything looks good because this is very simple data then you can also ignore the header and stuff like that csv name the mapping file mapping file becomes important later on we'll be looking at all that but then you just uh, begin the ingestion process right so what happens first is it creates a sample table in the custo db and then the mapping file is created and then the ingestion takes place right so it's copies the file over or maybe it doesn't really copy the file over with how the one lake architecture is set up um, but that's uh, for another time anyways so that data is supposed to be in here so we hit refresh and then what we see is in this table section we've got our table sample and if you break it down we get um, the full structure of that table uh, present for us and you can see that I can click into any one of these and I get the stats for that right so uh, the data is compressed and stored because it's stored in the in the data format in the backend. But as you know, I can click in and see. Suppose I have many tables, I could go in and see the size and the compression of each of these tables, and you get a schema as well, which comes from the mapping file, right? So now I just want to test this data and see that everything's in there. I can click check your data, and then if though for those of you who aren't aware of um, uh, KQL or Custo Query language, this is where. Um, that journey for you begins. I'll be doing a playlist on uh, the basics of Custo as well. So basically what we do is we just uh, type in the table's name, hit enter and then it gives us a pipe, a space and then you can enter your exact query. So suppose I want to know how many uh, records have come in. I will do the count function and don't worry, subscribe so that you can uh, stay updated for when I do my um, KQL playlist. But the count looks right, it's about a thousand records. I know that off the top of my head. And just to get an idea of what the data looks like and do take 10 which which is sort of like select top 10 uh, in SQL but yeah this looks fine and yeah that's the basics of how uh, KQLDB works in Microsoft Fabric as you can see uh, we can hit quick stats and stuff like that and um, you'll notice that the performance is quite fast in um, uh, KQLDB so that's it for this video. We'll be doing a lot more videos in Fabric, in uh, real-time analytics, uh, a lot more videos on ingestion from different types of sources that you've seen here, shortcuts, all that stuff. So stay, uh, stay subscribed, hit that notification button, and we'll see you soon. So thank you guys for watching.